Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and today is release day at Allen Hudson. Be sure to check out my blog for all the blog hop details, including how you can win. There's lots of new stamps and dies in this release, and I made a dreamy watercolor card with the new floral set in the weeds. Watercolor is not my go-to coloring media, but I'm working on becoming more media-able, if you know what I mean, and I thought this pretty stamp would work well with a really easy technique I've done before. I started by stamping the floral image onto some Ranger watercolor cardstock. I like this cardstock because it's bright white, although you'll see very soon that this whole panel gets covered with color, so matching wasn't an issue, even though I did use a white card base. I used VersaFine Onyx ink, which is waterproof, and I used my Mini Misty in case I needed to stamp it more than once to get a really good impression, but I didn't. I set the Misty inside, but I didn't remove the stamp. Next, I used some half-inch purple tape to attach my panel to a board so it won't warp as I add water. I'm using my Ulta New watercolors, which is also something a little unusual for me. I often use my Catherine Pooler ink pads for watercolor, but I felt that having all my colors in these pans would give me more choices without having to reach for individual ink pads. These colors are bright and beautiful. I started by coating the whole panel with clean, clear water. I'm using a cheap Ranger 1 inch flat brush and I want it to be quite wet because for this layer I want the colors to move quite a bit. I moved down to a half inch brush and I simply picked up color and splashed it down in the approximate place that I wanted it. I'm not staying in the lines here at all. I really want these colors to move out around the flowers and create a colorful halo effect. This will give me the dreamy feeling I'm going for. Even though there's lots of water on the panel, I'm adding lots of water to the pigment so that it will move really easily. To color the sky, I went back to the bigger brush and I picked up some blue and I started a horizontal wash technique from the top. I picked up my board and tilted it so that the blue would travel down toward the flowers and I kept it pretty watery too so that the color would soften out. I used my brush to help the colors move around into areas I wanted the halos, and then I picked up some green for a wash over the bottom portion of the panel, for the ground. Another go around with an even smaller brush this time to really direct the colors and fill in any areas that haven't got paint on them yet. Now that red and purple has traveled a bit too far, so I just grabbed a paper towel and blotted some of it up. I have to admit that watercoloring like this is really quite forgiving, and that makes this technique perfect for a novice like me. I added a bit more blue to the sky to make it a little more intense, and then I used my heat gun to dry the panel fully before my next step. I could have left the panel like this, it's dreamy and soft, but I went back with a smaller brush and I added some more detailed painting to add more color and make the flowers pop a bit more. This is quite easy because everything is colored already, and that underlayer means that you just need to add depth and shadows. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of this. I used a black velvet round brush, size 6 I think, to color the flowers. This brush costs a little more than the Ranger brushes, and I do like it, but I find myself wishing sometimes that the bristles were firmer. That may be just because I color with Copic markers so often, which are quite firm, but I feel like it would give me more control. The one thing I did want to show you is that I added some texture to those tall purpley flowers by pouncing my brush as I added more color. That underlayer of color comes through as lighter areas and adds interest. I used various mixes of greens and blues and teals for the leaves so that it wasn't just all one color. When I finished, I left it overnight to dry, just because it was late, not because it would take so long. The next morning, I carefully removed the purple tape by pulling it back on itself in the reverse order that I laid it down. And then I pulled my Mini Misty back out. Remember, I didn't move that stamp. During my watercoloring, the black ink lost some of its crispness, so now I'm going to refresh it with more ink to punch up the outlines. And I'm not going to lie, even using a Misty, this is a heart-stopping moment. Laying a lot of new black ink over top of this design after all this work, it's important that this stamps in the exact same spot, and that means I need to be sure that the cardstock is in the exact same spot. But it all worked out. I stamped it twice so that it would be wet enough to take some sparkly embossing powder to add even more interest. I should have used an anti-static pouch, but I simply forgot. But really, in this case, a little extra sparkle wasn't going to cause any problem. At least that's what I told myself. I used clear sparkle embossing powder from WOW, and I sprinkled it on the flowers and then tapped off the excess. I placed the panel into a shoebox lid that I've lined with aluminum foil. 
This lid helps save my fingers from the risk of burning, and I think that the heat reflects back from the foil and helps to reduce warping. Here's a quick look at the sparkle. These flowers are rich and dark, so I felt a big solid sentiment would work well. I used the Happy Birthday from the new That Thing You Did set, and again I stamped it with the VersaFine ink two times before using the same embossing powder over top. To finish the card, I trimmed the watercolor panel with a pierced rectangle die and I simply popped it up onto a white card base. Who knew weeds could be so pretty? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel for more inspiration. Product links are below in the description and also on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.